we'd planned to do a graphic novel to begin with, and uh, we were that was what appealed to us is this, this sort of idea of turning a diary, essentially uh, just a written document, into something that was visual. And we started off just imagining it as comics and a graphic novel, and then it gradually morphed into all these other things. We started including illustrations, cartoons, uh, photographs, paintings, poems, and all sorts of things came in until. You know, it sort of changed into the into the thing it is now. Uh, the end result has, I think, taken us by surprise because we set out looking at getting teenage boys reading books, and girls have taken to the book. Um, people of my father's generation, who's they didn't know about their uncles and fathers and grandfathers' experience in the war. It's been amazing how people have been captivated by it, and which has been, you know, at times quite overwhelming. The you know, winning the New Zealand Post. Book of the Year award. Didn't imagine for a second that, that that sort of thing would happen. The diaries were something that my father knew he had somewhere in the house. That was how we found out about my grandfather's experience. He enlisted, uh, like so many, lied about his age, put his age up by a couple of years because he had to be 20 to enlist and, and he was only, I think, a touch over 17 at the time. Um, a brother of his had tried to enlist, in fact I think two of them might have, one had bad varicose veins even as a teenager and the other had a big toe that lay over the top of his next toe so he was ruled medically unfit um, and so Cyril <laughs> was the lucky slash unlucky one of the family to go away. And so many of his mates were signing up too, that was a big part of it. Um, you know, it was a thing joining in this big adventure with your mates to begin with. I was surprised by the amount of uh, work that they had to do, navvying basically, carrying lump bits of lumber, carrying, uh, you know, uh, nails and buckets and wire, barbed wire, it just, they were just rather poorly paid workers working in a rather unsafe uh, work environment. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we didn't want it to be just dark and you know, saying how dreadful war is, um, because there were times when the soldiers had a good time. You know, that often wasn't when they were in the front lines, but mm. they did have a good time um, on occasion. Um, and it was important to show, you know, what they were laughing at, um, you know, what was entertaining them in such a dreadful place. With a car with a cartoonist and a an ex comedian. Uh, there was inevitable there'd be some kind of humour getting into the book. Yeah. We imagined Osh inspectors going through the trenches and saying, you need to get rid of that water, how long have those rats been there, you know, who else has got lice, all this sort of stuff. The soldiers included humour in, in the letters that they were sending home and what they were writing for soldiers' newspapers, there were jokes that they were telling at the time, and it was a really important component of their experience in the war. A lot of them had lost mates and so there were elements of guilt to you know, they're surviving and so on. It was such a complex thing. But they did have these letters that had been sent home and, and in the case of my grandfather, a diary that he'd kept every day that had been a very important thing to him as he went from day to day and a wonderful record of what life in the army actually was about.